Woo Sweet potatoes are one of the easiest crops to grow, but because they're underground, it can be a little tricky to know when and how to harvest them and store them properly. So today, I'm gonna to show you not one, but five different times that you might want to harvest your sweet potatoes, plus a couple different ways to harvest them. Make sure you stick around until the very end and I'll show you how I'm curing and storing my sweet potatoes this year. Hi guys, I'm April from Resprout. Like and subscribe for more garden tips and tutorials from my suburban front yard garden where I help you garden like a boss. Okay, listen to this craziness. You can actually harvest sweet potatoes at five different times. So that's good news because it's gonna be hard to F up the harvest times here. So the first time you'll wanna harvest sweet potatoes, you'll wanna harvest the leaves and you'll do that in the summertime when the leaves are nice and fresh looking. So this, not this. Nobody wants to eat these skanky sweet potato leaves. Sweet potato leaves are grown in Africa and Asia, partly for their greens. They're a little bitter like turnip greens, but in a good way. You can eat them fresh or sauteed just like spinach. Sweet potatoes are what I call a double duty crop, a plant that you can harvest multiple parts from, which is really awesome if you have a small garden. You can get double or even triple the amount of harvest from the same space. I made videos about some other double duty crops that I love, broccoli leaves and garlic scapes, which are both super yummy. I'll link those above and down below. The second time that you'll want to harvest your sweet potatoes is, and I know this is gonna sound like a cop out, but it's actually whenever you like the size of your sweet potatoes. There's no rules here. You can actually get edible, storable roots within two weeks of planting, so any time after that is fine. You can see what size the roots are by just getting in there with your hands or gently lifting the roots with a garden fork. A lot of people prefer sweet potatoes at the smaller fingerling size for roasting. Or some people eat a lot of sweet potato fries, so you'll want to wait for them to become huge, like softball size. Be careful because when they get that big, they can split, which makes them more prone to spoiling. So if you find your sweet potatoes are splitting, try checking them earlier. Just be gentle when you check the size. Try not to disturb the roots too much if you plan on continuing to let the other plants grow or you find they're not ready yet. The third time you might wanna consider harvesting is the variety's maturity date, usually 85 to 120 days. So check your plant info and mark your calendar for the harvest date and go by that. Another sign you might need to harvest is when the tips turn yellow. For me, that was a couple weeks before first frost. Sweet potatoes are a tender perennial, meaning they will grow forever in the warmer parts of the world. In the US, that's zones nine through 11. In these areas, you won't see yellow tips because the yellow tips are the plant's reaction to fall and cooler temperatures. So you guys living in the warmer areas, use the previous three methods to time your harvest. Otherwise, your sweet potatoes are gonna become giant head size monstrosities. For the rest of us in cooler areas, the yellow tips are a sign that the end is nigh and we should start digging. The last opportunity you'll have to get your sweet potatoes is the first frost. So the first predicted frost date or the actual first frost works. My sweet potato suffered a little bit of light frost damage a couple days ago, so I figured it's now or never. That's why I'm out here with you guys. Once the frost hits, the leaves die back like this, and the roots, our sweet potatoes, have about a week before they'll start rotting in the ground. Dead vines will pass decay to the root, so if the vines are completely killed, cut them off, even if you can't harvest immediately. Sweet potatoes will start to get damaged if the soil is below 55 degrees Fahrenheit, so if the frost is upon you, make sure you get to them quick. Okay, let's get these puppies out of the ground. To start with, it's usually easier if you cut the vines off first. You can prune them off for containers or mow them down if they're planted in the ground. The University of Missouri Extension says that cutting the vines off a few days before harvest makes the skins toughen up even more, so do that ahead of time if you can. If the soil is dry, give it a quick, light watering. This will reduce abrasion to the potato skin and increase storage life. There's a couple of ways you can get the roots out now. First is old school with the hands. This is a great method if you have nice loose soil or just like getting your hands dirty. Just dig around and pull them out, kind of like a treasure hunt. Kids will love this. 
So as a totally random experiment, I had some extra sweet potato slips. So I threw them in this old potting soil bag and they actually grew. So I'm gonna dump those out and see what we got. If you have containers, you can also do what a lot of potato growers do and just gently dump the container over and then sift through the soil. If you have a larger area like large raised beds or in-ground rows, I'd recommend a garden fork or dull shovel. Try to slide in around the edge of the bed so you don't accidentally pierce a potato and just lift the soil enough to separate the potatoes from the soil. If your soil is loose enough and your potatoes are big enough, you can use a garden fork like a colander where all the soil falls through and leaves the sweet potatoes on the fork. The most important thing here with all of these methods is not to bruise or scrape or pierce the sweet potatoes. Don't even wash or drop them. Otherwise, they won't cure or store very well. I think with all these methods, my favorite is loosening it with a fork and then using the hand. It's a little more labor intensive, but I know the sweet potatoes are safer. I feel like I miss less sweet potatoes in the ground because I can feel around for them better too. If you guys have another favorite harvest method or a special trick, let us all know in the comments. Okay, so now we should have this pile of dirty, fairly undamaged sweet potatoes, right? The next step is to cure them, which heals any abrasions that they might have. And it also increases the sugar content, which will definitely be appreciated by anybody who does not put marshmallows on their sweet potatoes. For ideal curing, they should be left for four to six days at 80 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit at 90% humidity. Now, personally, I do not have a place like that in my house, and I'm not about to jack the heat up in my house to roast us all alive. So the best that these guys are gonna get is an upstairs bedroom that reaches an overly toasty 70 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit during the day. Then I'm gonna put some seedling heat mats underneath these trays to make up the difference. You can also put your sweet potatoes in a small closet with a thermostat controlled space heater to keep them warm. You can put them in a greenhouse or put them in plastic bags in direct sun. For the humidity, I'm gonna throw a blanket over top of them. That should trap the moisture and heat in there. Then I'm gonna throw a bowl of water in there for good measure. To keep an eye on things, I have this fun little gadget called a sensor push. I use this sometimes in the winter with the indoor seedlings or my outdoor coal frames to keep an eye on temperatures and humidity. And I can even program it to alert me if the temperatures go too high, like in my coal frames in the spring, or if they go too low, like my seedling trays in my basement. Okay, so fast forward four to six days now. These guys are all cured up. It's time for storage. Important here, guys, do not store them in the refrigerator. Refrigerators are too cold. Remember this? Sweet potatoes will start to get damaged if the soil is below 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Most refrigerators are only a couple degrees above freezing, so in the 34 to 40 degree Fahrenheit range, so that is going to damage sweet potatoes. They prefer to be stored at 55 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit at 90% humidity. The closest place I have in my house to that is my unfinished basement. It's cool, it's damp down there. I don't think it's 90% humidity, but I'm gonna keep the blanket and the bowl of water with these guys to try to keep that humidity up. And I'm gonna continue monitoring them with the sensor fish. Under perfect conditions, sweet potatoes will last six to 10 months like this. Since I don't exactly have the Sheraton for sweet potatoes here, I'm hoping to get about three months in these conditions. We're probably gonna eat a lot of these in the next month or so, so it's really not a big deal that they don't last 10 months. I consider Operation Sweet Potato Harvest a total success. I am super stoked about having all these sweet potatoes around this winter. You know, they're like fries and stuff. I hope this video helped you out. Remember to sign up for my email newsletter for more garden resources and keep gardening like a boss and I'll see you guys soon.